Okay, uh, welcome to the talk, uh, When Smart Cards Meet Smart Contracts. Um, we're going to sh show two demos today, um, and we're going to um, hope that the internet connection works. So. And then we have some time, hopefully, for Q&A uh, afterwards. So first to introduce ourselves, um, this is my colleague uh, Didi and I'm Peter. Um, we're both uh, co-founders and uh, developers at Lab10 Collective. Um, we're a decentralized cooperative um, with 40 members. Um, most of us uh, are in Graz in Austria, but we have some, some other colleagues distributed in, in Austria as well. Uh, so if you're in the neighborhood, uh, come to visit us. Um, yeah, so as a cooperative, we have a vision for society. So we always said we want a free and fair society. But recently we've um, reshaped our vision and um, now are working for a, a zero carbon society. And we want to use um, the blockchain to, to do that. Um, we ourselves also initiated uh, uh, Ethereum sidechain that's not using proof of work. Um, and we started that a year ago. It's called Artis. So to give you um, an overview for our demo we have set up here. Um, we've created um, or we're developing a, a card a called Minerva card. This is a smart card like this one here. This is like a prototype for now. And it's an NFC card, so you can scan it with an NFC reader or in the future or also with your smartphone. And it has a high security chip in it um, by Infineon. So this chip can sign blockchain transactions on, on the card itself. And uh, so for that, the keys are on this card, the private keys and they're um, generated on the card itself and can never, can never be extracted. So you're, you're safe there with your private keys. Um, yeah, I already said you can sign Ethereum transactions with that. Yeah. So let's move to the demo now. So it started uh, with a project we named uh, Kagöd, Kamusi, which in German would be kein Geld, keine Musik, and in English it would be no money, no music. Um, this was done in the context of a hackathon um, conducted by Infineon earlier this year. Um, the ingredients are an old school record player, which you can see here, it's portable, which is convenient, um, some great Austrian music, and uh, a Raspberry Pi, which controls uh, a power socket and talks to the artist blockchain. It's a rather high risk demo because it's pretty complex, but uh, let's see if it works in Berlin. Yeah, great. Okay, let's tune it back. So what happened now is um, when the reader detects the card, it, uh, it signs a transaction. So uh, what's happening here is uh, we are using an ERC20 token, um, which is basically streamed from, from the card to the, let's say, operator of the player. And as long as uh, the stream is ongoing, the music is playing. And we are using tokens which were uh, minted on Ethereum in 2017 in the context of art projects, the so-called play tokens. Um, we moved them to artists via token bridge. And on artists, they became a streaming token. Um, this is a token which implements ERC20 plus uh, EEP2100, uh, which is our proposal for the interface of such a streaming token. And when I remove the card, it should broadcast the transaction for stopping the stream. And yeah, that worked too. 
So that was the first demo. And what we did next was, uh, so after this project, which was more about fun and about getting hands-on, we thought about what, what would be interesting, uh, more interesting things to do with this card. And uh, we, we decided that the uh, Gnosis Safe uh, system is pretty interesting and, and uh, things we could combine out of that. And just a brief intro for those who are not familiar with it. Um, at its core, it's a smart contract based uh, multi-signature wallet, um, which was designed and developed with uh, great care by Gnosis, um, formally verified, etc. And it also has a module system which allows to build interesting things. For example, it would be possible to um, to make more granular um, policies for how the different um, owners can operate uh, yeah, the wallet. Yeah, so um, our colleague, um, Thomas Haller, in, in his uh, magician costume here, he could not make it to DEPCON, but um, he was like the lead developer of this project. Um, it was um, funded by a Gecko grant. We applied for um, rather last minute, but we applied for a small amount. Um, and we're going to show a video for this one. Um, okay, I'm just going to try to narrate over it. <laughs> okay, um, we have a laptop with an NFC card reader and we have several cards. And the first one we can use to deploy a save. So the card signs um, a transaction and deploys a save. And then uh, you can add um, different cards as a multi-sig. So, so you need um, two or three cards to sign a transaction. And by laying the card on the NFC reader, you can read out the address. So um, this is like the second card and the third card. These are all animal themed, so cat, the dog, and monkeys. So now it's three cards registered for the save. And then you can uh, confirm this transaction with the initial card you used to deploy this analysis save. So, and um, then you can make transactions uh, from, uh, you, first you need to fund this save. Um, so we, we have a, uh, another account or another card that we put on this card reader to, to transfer funds to the save. So now it's, uh, it's funded with uh, one ATS. And the next step um, is to uh, transfer some coins to another account. So we scan another card, read out the address, and then it says, okay, we need to collect signatures to, to make this uh, transaction. So we, as I already mentioned, we only need two or three cards. So we're going to um, um, take one out of the deck of three cards and just use the other two to, to sign this transaction. So we're using this monkey card here as the first one. And the dog card is the second one. And then we have two out of three um, signatures. And we need to finish that off with, uh, again, this initial card we used to uh, set up the save with. So yeah, 
that was the demo. And then you can start over and, and uh, fund it again and yeah. Okay, um, this is our presentation. So we, I hope we have a bit time uh, left for some questions if you want to go into technical details. Otherwise we have um, our contact details over there and also you can check out our projects on GitHub. So are there any questions? Sorry to do with what? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, this project not directly um, regarding carbon free one, um, let's say one less demo and more serious project we're now focusing on is setting up um, a fund which allows to, uh, which basically combines the idea of offsetting carbon with investing in, in uh, PV installations. And what we try to do there is using uh, the blockchain to facilitate uh, the, the, the process. For example, to, uh, we will start with, uh, with crypto assets, so it, uh, where somebody can easily pay in some crypto. So we start by doing it ourselves. We have a policy now that all flights done by lapdan members need to be offset uh, by the system. We are using DAI for a start. And, uh, and we also want uh, to use it to make it as, trans as transparent as possible because that's often an issue with, uh, with these systems, the transparency. And we are also looking into systems like, uh, um, like the Commons, uh, Commons DAO stack. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of emerging components uh, and we're trying to somehow compose those in, in, in ways which uh, make it easier to uh, achieve such things. That's one example which has, is more di directly connected to this vision than let's say now Descartes. Descartes is most about um, reducing the entry barrier to the system because uh, a big problem still for most outside of the crypto community is to handle keys in the first place. And that's very convenient with the card. As long as you physically have the card, you have the key, you are, don't need to worry about it being stolen because it can't be extracted. So that's uh, in a way a component which makes it easier to access the ecosystem. Exactly, yes. Um, yes, that's something we even did uh, with many of the demo cards. We put the QR code of the address. That's often easier than scanning it with NFC. Yeah, and the private, so the private key is generated on the card, remains there. And uh, yeah, and there's also a, a signature counter. So even if uh, somebody would use it to sign something in between, that could also be detected. Uh, that's some magic which uh, <laughs> Infineon knows. Uh, I, I'm not deep on, into this. Uh, they told us that it's comparable to the to the chips they're using in passports, and there's pretty strict regulations around it. So I, I don't really know in depth details about that, but the idea is that it's it should be as hard as possible to 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 get to this key, and uh, we even. When we discussed uh, possible extensions to the interface at uh, several points, he said, no, we don't want to do that because that may increase the risk that an attacker may figure out how the circuits work and, and be able to extract key. Yeah. Yeah. That's hey, you can, there's also an option to, to insert a seed for, uh, from the outside to, to generate the key. So you can, can put uh, random data from the outside. Yeah, but still it's true that the card needs to do uh, random, num random number generation. Um, if you're interested, there is a pretty extensive user manual online on uh, just look for Infineon blockchain on GitHub. Um, I guess that covers, I, I'm not familiar with the details there. So, so far, <laughs> I'm trusting that, but uh, 
before we will actually release something, we will for sure also dig into that more. Uh, did, did you think about any like real life use cases for this multi signature uh, scheme with the car? Um, yes, I mean we are still in let's say in the brainstorming phase. I think that one strength of this combination of the card with uh, with the multi sig with the gnosis safe is that um, you can have the convenience of the card uh, where. So at, at first sight, you could say, okay, well, if you can't extract the key, that means you can't back up it. And the great thing is if you combine that with uh, Gnosis Safe, uh, then you could uh, build it in a way that even if you lose a card, you don't lose uh, completely lose access to the funds. So you have a lot of freedom how to build a recovery um, for that. So I think that's one uh, interesting use case. I think another in interesting use case could be to uh, something like notaries, where today is I uh, experience that uh, if, if you have a multi-shareholder company with the shareholders being in different countries, there's still often paper being sent around and it's complicated and expensive. And that could also be something where maybe this could help to make that easier and cheaper. Sorry, the first use case and gnosis? You mean the, the first demo? The second? Um, I would say they liked it. So, it <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, this, this was clearly set up as an MVP, and it, it was also rather one of the or I think the smallest project in, in this round, but the feedback was positive, yeah. So future use cases obviously would use a smartphone and not a card reader you have to carry around with you. And so there's this potential for, for more use cases. Um, I think they were impressed and funded us, so, <laughs> but you have to ask uh, Moses uh, about future. But we, we're, we're happy to apply for more grants and, and to <laughs> more use cases. So, um, if there's if there's no more uh, time or no more questions, um, you can see us afterwards and also try it yourself. And. <laughs> and